David Witt stands on the corner of North and Pennsylvania in Baltimore, where for one day violence raged. And for a week, huge, mostly peaceful protests took over the streets, capturing the world's attention. If I have to die we can, so we can get these police to do the right thing, I'm dead. You know, I will willingly give my life up for my kids. We got a camera. Drive. It may seem like Witt's protecting his own neighborhood, but he's not. People will be reminded, number one, who the enemy is. And, and, and is that police? We forgot exactly. They are the number one enemy. This is where we first meet him on the streets of Ferguson. Witt lives just steps from the spot where Michael Brown was shot and killed by Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. You came here from Ferguson. Why did you come? Okay, first reason I came because uh, one of our cop watchers that was on the ground out here, he got arrested. Witt started his own chapter of Cop Watch in Ferguson, raising money to give residents cameras to record police. Since then, he's traveled to communities frustrated by police shootings. North Charleston, South Carolina, Oakland, and now Baltimore. Would you consider yourself a professional, what, protester, a professional cop watcher? What would you consider yourself? I think, I think, I think you can say both. I, I, I do consider myself as a professional cop watch. I've been cop watching my whole life, just like other, other black people in our community. We just haven't had cameras to do it with. Witt is part of a growing number of protesters flocking to areas of civil unrest with goals that go beyond marching. Many live stream and tweet events on the ground, documenting them and often growing their followers. <laughs> their power evident again Monday in Baltimore when someone's gun went off and police were there. But social media can be wrong, like today when many claim police opened fire on a protester. That turned out not to be the case, according to police. Some local officials and some residents say the outsiders are agitators. Defense attorney Nick Pantelakis works and lives in Baltimore and was caught up in the protest the night his city burned. The perfect example is the first day, and I don't want to mispronounce the gentleman's name, but he, during the protest, when everyone else was saying, let's protest, let's, let's get the voice out, he gets up there and says, let's shut this city down. A lot of these people, although they have an agenda that is dear to their heart, and I don't fault them for having it dear to their heart, don't care about the results of what they say because they don't live here. Witt says that is not his intention. He says residents here open their doors to him. Cot watch is a form of protesting. And even though Witt and others call protesting their profession, he says he's not making much of a living off of it, though he says some are. The unemployed electrician says his travel expenses are paid by community members who believe in his cause. When I was coming out here, somebody got my ticket for me. I don't got no, I ain't part of no organization. I'm a regular person. A regular person with a wife and kids fighting for their future, one protest at a time. Sarah Seidner, CNN, Baltimore.